Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today I visited the last of these three exhibitions at Yanhuang Art Museum in Beijing. In the last video, I have shown you the first exhibition landscape paintings and the second exhibition bird and flower paintings. If you haven't seen them, make sure you check them out. Links in the description below. And the theme of today's exhibition is portraiture. I was happy to find a diverse collection of works ranging from traditional CAE to Chinese comics, guo chao, to contemporary abstract. I'd like to show you this exhibition and talk about seven problems when selling your portrait works. No matter which style you use, you might encounter some of those problems, hopefully not all of them, at the beginning of your art business. Problem number one. It's David Bowie. The first problem is about the rights. Do you have the rights to actually paint and sell this work? Who is the person that you're painting? Is that David Bowie? Uh, I bet you don't have his agreement. Who is the photographer? Is the photographer okay with you using his photo or her photo as a reference? If you intend to take photos of someone for your own works, it's always good to carry a small card in your wallet for the models to sign. Alternatively, you can buy royalty-free uh, stock photos or source them from Creative Commons or in the public domain. It's not okay to sell portraits if you do not have the agreement of this person, but it's okay if you use it only for your own practice or your own appreciation. And that falls into the fair use. Number two, it doesn't look like me. So the second problem is quite common when you are painting a commissioned work. And this person might like the results or might not at all. Even if it's not a commissioned piece, you probably would still feel obligated to change some details according to his or her advice, because after all, it's a face of this person and you might feel the pressure. Painting people often means dealing with them as well. It takes a lot more time and patience and effort to communicate and reach agreements, so make sure you do take the time. Problem number three, it's a portrait of my mother. Personally, I've seen this one quite often. Many artists start out painting people they love, like their parents, partners, and children, but those portraits are the hardest to sell. Ask someone outside of your family, would you like to buy a portrait of my elderly mother? Like really, give it a try. I'd be surprised if you could sell many pieces at all. If you could sell one piece, you're lucky, or you might be really good. My advice is to blend the looks of different persons using Photoshop before painting. So you have a reference photo of, let's say, people from different kind of backgrounds. It doesn't look like your parents or like your uh, person from your private circle anymore. Or leaving out some really apparent features to make it less recognizable. Problem number four. It's not him. It was an awkward moment at the exhibition. A visitor pointed at a portrait of famous Dr. Zhong Nanshan and said, Look, here is Chou Enlai, the first premier of China. Of course, it was not Chou Enlai. Like, are you kidding me? And the artist was just next to the work, standing there, and I could imagine how embarrassed or how awkward he must have felt. I mean, really, if you paint a famous person and it was mistaken for another, it's emotionally devastating for the artist or the commenter or maybe both. My advice is to do the opposite to the previous advice, include the most prevalent features of this person. Uh, if you couldn't, write the names on this photo or this art to so make sure that people don't uh, mistake it for another famous person. Problem number five, it's too political or it's too religious. A few years ago, a friend gifted me a nice portrait painting of a religious figure. I had it uh, put up on my wall. My mom even thought gifting a religious painting to a non-religious person was mildly inappropriate. 
I'm not from a religious upbringing, but I do not reject religion either. It's just something to keep in mind because if you make reference to Virgin Mary or Mother Teresa, your art might only appeal to a limited number of people, and this number can be small or large depending on the figure, on the religion, on the region, and many things. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be painting them. It's just to realize those portraits might. Provoke very strong emotions, positive ones and negative ones. Problem number six: That lady was naked. The security guard told me a work was removed hours before the exhibition due to nudity issues. I was surprised because I just saw another work with a topless woman being exhibited right there. So I didn't really understand, and I asked him, "What do you mean? Like, what was the problem?" And he told me that the topless lady was okay, but not the. Bottomless one, and if it's too photorealistic, that was not okay. So I can understand because it's a public exhibition, not a public one. So after all, you know, we are in a public space of people of all ages, and in many countries, there are regulations like this on what you can show and what you cannot. It's always good to know this in advance when you are selling your work to another country. Problem number seven. It took me a long time. Typically, it takes you a lot longer to paint portraits than plants or landscapes using the same techniques or similar techniques. It takes many years to study human anatomy as well. And the problem is, the longer it takes you, the more you need to charge your customers in order to pay for the time that you have spent. And when you are trying to sell your work at a very competitive price, you might be underpaid. And if you're selling your work too high, you know, priced too much, you might not get as many sales. Therefore, you're building up the inventory, and keep a large inventory could be very costly for you as well. So my advice is to find a faster technique. Technique to paint portraits. If you want to paint a lot of them, like original works, alternatively, you can consider selling art prints, limited ones or not limited ones. You don't need to keep inventory at all if you use print-on-demand services, and you can get the most out of each piece of original work and offer something at a lower price for collectors with limited budget. Are you a portrait artist? What problems do you face when selling your art? I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in a comment below. That's all for today. Thank you very much for taking your time and watch this video. Click like if you enjoyed this, and see you in the next video.